Okay, so write an equation in terms of sine and cosine using this graph. So the things you need to start with are going to be the A value, the B value, the C value. And eventually we're going to have a D value here at the end. But right now, just those three. To find A, you can look at the graph and find A. But ultimately, A is going to always equal to the max subtract the min divided by 2. So if I looked at this graph, my max is here. So that's at the number 1. And then my minimum is here. And that's at the number negative 1. So if that's the case, my A value is going to be 1 subtract negative 1 divided by 2. So that's going to be 1 plus 1 over 2. Just 2 over 2 is 1. So no, A has to be 1. And that's, that's the first thing we have. The next thing we have is the B value. The B value is going to be what well, we know the period is equal to 2 pi divided by B. So since we know the period is 2 pi divided by B, we can choose a place to start this graph. And if I look at this graph, let's say it was sine, so because we're looking at sine, a good place to start with sine may be right here. Because afterwards it goes up, comes back down through, and finishes there. So that would be a good one period of the sine curve. So if this is the starting place, this is where the period ends at for one period. We can find out how long this segment is. Again, I always say, I tell my students to start at the right and always attract backwards. Meaning that on the right, we have 7 pi over 3. And I'll subtract whatever that number is. It's a positive pi over 3. So 7 pi over 3 is subtract pi over 3. Since they both have the same denominators, you can subtract across the top. That'll leave you with 6 pi over 3, which reduces to be 2 pi. So my period of this curve is 2 pi. So if that's the case, I know since the period is 2 pi over b, I know it should be the formula for the period should equal to the actual period. And it's really nice because you probably just know what b has to be 1 because whatever 2 pi over b has to equal 2 pi, but b would have to be 1. But if you didn't know, you would put 2 pi over 1 and you cross multiply. So if you didn't know any better, you would put that over 1 and you multiply here multiply there. So b times 2 pi has equal to 1 times 2 pi. Well, 1 times 2 pi is just 2 pi. And b times 2 pi is just that. So to finish off for b, you divide both sides by 2 pi. So that you see that these cancel. So b has equal to 2 pi divided by 2 pi, which you know is 1. So I know that b has to be 1. So the last thing there is to find is the c value. And the c value is negative c over b. We write that equals to the starting point. So if you go back and look at it again, the starting point was right here, pi over 3. So since pi over 3 is the c value, that's what my starting point is. So if you remember, starting point equals to negative c over b. So since my starting point is pi over 3, pi over 3 equals negative c over b. We already know the b value is 1, so I'm going to write negative c over 1 equals a pi over 3. So if that's the case, I know that negative c equals a pi over 3. And if it's solving that by both sides by negative 1, you're going to get c is negative pi over 3. So now I know a, b, and c. And if that's the case, 
I can go about writing the equation. So I'll start here. My A value is one. So it's gonna be a one here. Times sine. The B value is also a one. Of one X. Subtract the C value. It's negative power of three. So if that's the case, we have a double negative here, which means it's really positive. So it should be one side, one x is just x plus pi over three. So that's an equation for that curve. You can come up with lots of equations for that curve. Um, this is just one of them. Technically, you need y equals in there. So that is better written as y equals all of that. So again, depends on who is doing it, you got a different equation. Because if someone else came behind you and they chose to start here for sign, they wouldn't be wrong to do that. And they would come up with an equation that looks different from yours. And if someone else came along and they started someplace else for sign, for example, they started here, they could start here, go down, and come back up. They could come up with equations for sign, so that would be a negative sign because it started going down first. So you can come up with multiple equations for the exact same line. They're all if you graph from the calculator, it all represent this exact same equation. So just because it looks different from yours, that means it's wrong. It just means they chose to write it a different way. So that's one with sine. Let's look at one with cosine. So in this one, we're going to write the equation in terms of cosine. And A value is still there. The B value is not what it's just like it was at first. Subtract C. We have a new letter in this one, though. Um, and it could be with any of them, sine or cosine, the D value. This D value represents the vertical shift. So we talked already about horizontal shifts. We talked about how this A value gives us an amplitude that ultimately stretches the graph, and makes it taller, shorter. And the C value gives a shift to the left or right, a horizontal shift. Well, this D value has never been added outside the parentheses. In this in parentheses, this number been added out here will represent your vertical shift in the graph. So let's get started with this one. Let's suppose we start with cosine. The cosine will represent this, again the symbol of a Texas Longhorn or a U, kind of with little hooks on it in here. Um, given that we have a starting place, in this problem, my starting place is right here. And it ends right here, one period. So, I know enough to get started. And this one may be easier to find the D value first. The D value is basically this line right here. Whatever the line is, represents the middle of the curve, that's your D value. Um, that line goes through. It's got up by one, two, and that's a three. So I know it's got my ones. So that line represents one. So I know my D value is one. So after I know D, I can then go about finding amplitude. Um, my amplitude is still the max subtract min divided by two. Here, my maximum is here at three. My minimum is here and that number is at negative one. So that's my minimum, it's at negative one. So I will wind up having three subtract the negative one divided by two. Well, we know that means three plus one divided by two, just four over two, just two. So A, in this problem. So that basically means that I went up 2 
from the middle line, and he counted, went up two spaces, and went down two from the middle line, and you do one, and that's two. So I know eight. Next thing is B. You don't know B until you know the period. So you go about finding the period, just like we did last time, by finding how far this is. It's taking this number, subtracting backwards. So it's going to be pi, subtracting negative pi. So pi, subtract negative pi. So it means pi plus pi. One pi plus another pi is two pi's. So that period is also two pi. So to find B, again, it's going to be a period. So you go to 2 pi over B. So 2 pi over B equals 2 pi. We just did it a while ago. We should know B now is 1. And the last thing we need is a C value. And that just comes from the starting point. So since I started here, I started around the curve, the starting point is right there at negative pi. So I'm going to start. Is negative c over b, which equals to the number we decided was negative pi. So since b is 1, is negative c over b. That's equal to negative pi. Again, b is 1. So let's go call it 1. Negative c over 1. So I want to finish solving that. I put over 1 as well. And cross multiply. 1 times pi and 1 times c. So basically, negative c is equal to negative pi. You divide both those by negative 1. And you find the c equals to pi. So I know A, I know B, and I know D. So I can begin writing an equation. My equation for this curve should be Y equals A plus 2. So it's going to be 2 cosine. The B value is 1. So it will be 1X. Subtract. The C value is positive pi. Pi plus because we have a new line here that wasn't in any of the problems before today that has a shift upwards. We have a d value, and that d value is 1. So, an equation for that curve is that. And that's all there is to know about it. At this point, you're welcome to start beginning with the homework. Good luck.